Good day, students. Welcome to another exciting episode of School on Air. My name is Oade Ifeo, and I'll be taking your biology class today. And the topic we'll be looking at is organization and maintenance of life. And the topic we'll be looking at today is organization and maintenance of life. Please pay perhaps attention in today's class in order to achieve the following learning objectives that I have for you for today's class. At the end of this class, you'll be able to define a cell, describe parts of a typical light microscope, describe the two basic types of cells, distinguish plant cells from animal cells, and outline functions of cell organelles. So first off, let's look at what is. So the first thing we'll be looking at is the microscope. Microscopes can be broadly divided into two main types. We have the light microscope and the electron microscope. The light microscope uses a beam of light as source of illumination. It is cheaper to purchase and easier to handle and use than electron microscope. The light microscope is what you see in school laboratories because the electron microscope is more expensive. That means the light microscope is easier to purchase and use. The light microscope uses a beam of light as a source of illumination. I mean, that even makes it cheaper because for the electron microscope, using electrons, it will be more expensive and more difficult to gather electrons and put it inside the microscope, therefore making it a very complex microscope. Electron microscope use a stream of electrons released at high voltage from an element in the microscope. It is more expensive and requires training to handle and use. The electron microscope is what is used in laboratories, that is big laboratories, in order to see maybe your, your DNA sample. And it uses a stream of electrons from an element. That is why it is more expensive because elements are hard to get and they could you be using elements that disintegrate at a particular um at a particular year, time, or hour, and that is something we cannot use in a school laboratory. Images of objects produced by electron microscopes are bigger and more detailed. That means what you would see in a light microscope, you, be, you what you cannot see in a light microscope, you can see in an electron microscope because the electrons gather around the organelles, the very tiny organelles, like an example, ribosomes. They gather around the ribosomes and you're able to see them clearly. It is only electron microscope that can reveal viruses and organelles such as ribosomes, organelles smaller than 0.5 nanometer. Like I just mentioned, the electrons would gather around the ribosome and it would like illuminate it, make it obvious because it's like the electrons are around the organelle, so therefore making it very obvious to see. This ability of electron microscope to see objects smaller than what can be seen by light microscope is called resolution. So, we'll be looking at what is a cell. Cells are structural and functional units. All organisms consist of at least one cell except viruses. As we remember, viruses are living and, and non-living things. That means they are non-living things in the environment while they are living in, in your body. And that means that every human comprises of cells, but a organization of cells are called tissues, an organization of tissues are called organs, and an organization of organs are called a system. So therefore, our system, like the circulatory system, the reproductive system, is was the basics of that system was a cell. Organisms can be grouped into unicellular and multicellular. That is, they just have one cell and multicellular, that means they have many cells. We as human beings, we are multicellular, but lower animals such as bacteria, they are unicellular. Robert Hooke discovered the cell in the 17th century when he was examining a piece of cork through a microscope. Janssen invented the compound microscope in 1590. The invention of the microscope facilitated cell studies and discovery of structures and organisms that were not known previously. The electron microscope began to be used broadly around the mid to late 1940s. It produced clearer and larger images of cell content because, like I mentioned, the electrons gather around the, the organelles and they are being reflected through the microscope. 
So we'll be looking at the parts of the microscope. Of, and this microscope we have in front of us is the light microscope. We have the eyepiece there where we put our eyes to look at the object, the, ob the object that we are viewing. And the object we'll be viewing would be placed on the stage and clipped on the stage with the stage clips in order to see them properly and move it around. The objective lens, we have the 10, 40 and 5 lens, depending on which type of microscope. There are some that also have the 16 objective lens and the cost adjustive knob that is to move the stage up and down. The stage clips is to hold them in place at the perfect angle where we can see the the organism that we are viewing. We have the diaphragm and the light source because this is a light microscope. What we are using to view this organism is light. We have the base where we put it on the table and the fine adjustment knob which we will use to magnify what we are looking at. That will bring it either like it make it sharper, it make what we are viewing sharper, or the cost adjustment knob would move the stage up or down. After Robert Hooke's discovery, Theodore Squam in 1839 and Matthias Sheldon in 1838 proposed the cell theory. So what is this cell theory? So the cell theory has the following features. The cell is the basic structural and functional unit of all living organisms. New cells originate only from pre-existing cells. That means what makes up our body are from pre-existing cells. And that would also be what we do during reproduction because we are not formed from nothing. We are formed from the sperm and eggs, which are a group of cells. And that what makes the human body, that was what makes us as zygotes, as humans. All living organisms are, compo of, are composed of one or more cells. Like I mentioned, our body, our syst the systems in our body comprises of cells, therefore we have cells. There are two basic types of cells. We have the prokaryotic cells and we have the eukaryotic cells. An example of eukaryotic cells are bacteria and archaea. And while prokaryotic cells are what is known as man, human or animal or plant cells. Now, let's look at the general features of prokaryotic, of prokaryotic cells. They have no true nucleus because DNA is not surrounded by a membrane. And the DNA is circular and lives freely in the cytoplasm. So there are two basic types of cells. We have the prokaryotic cells and we have the eukaryotic cells. We humans are known to have eukaryotic cells, while bacteria and archaea are known to have prokaryotic cells. So let's look at what the features of prokaryotic cells. They have no true nucleus because DNA, because the DNA is not surrounded by membrane, and the DNA is circular and lies freely in the cytoplasm. The DNA is over there, which is a double helix structure, and it contains the um, hereditary. It com it, com it comprises of what controls our body. So, other features of prokaryotic cells. They are mainly unicellular and they have no membrane-bound organelles. They contain small ribosomes, which are 70S, and the organisms in this group are bacteria and archaea. That's the diagram of prokaryotic cells that we have before us. The DNA, as you can see, is not put in any type of membrane. It is lying freely in the cytoplasm, which is a green substance. The ribosomes are those tiny things. Like, like we've said, they are small. That's why they are 70S. And we have plasma membrane and there is nothing else in, there is no organelle in the prokaryotic cell that has a membrane. So this is a Venn diagram showing what is in the prokaryotic cell, the eukaryotic cell, and what is in both of the cells. Both of them contain DNA because DNA is what controls the function and the function of our bodies. They contain ribosomes, which are also necessary for cell replication. That's also necessary for cell replication. That is for meiosis and mitosis. They have cell membrane and they contain cytoplasm, which is the jelly-like structure where organelles are found. Now, we've spoken about prokaryotes. So let's look at the eukaryotes. They have a complex structure, they have prominent nucleus, and they have a large size. Prominent nucleus meaning that in the nucleus is what contains the DNA. That means the DNA is not 
lying freely in the cytoplasm for the prokaryotes. And the cell walls either have cheating or cellulose. Plant cells have cellulose cell wall. And they have light ribosomes, that means you can be able to view them up rather than the prokaryotes. And they're either unicellular or multicellular. And they have membrane-bound organelles. And examples are humans, plants, and fungi. For the prokaryotes, we already mentioned that they have no organelles, small ribosomes, and their cell walls have, have peptidoglycan. So, let's look at some cell organelles where we have the nucleus where i mentioned the dna is we have the rough endoplasmic reticulum rough re rough er the smooth endoplasmic reticulum which is smooth er mitochondrion golgi apparatus cal vacuole and vesicles we have lysosomes we have cell wall which is present in plant cells only we have chloroplasts which are also present in plant cells only what and chloroplasts is what the plants use for photosynthesis and we also have ribosomes eukaryotes are organelles that are compartmentalized separated from the cytoplasm around them like i said earlier to allow them to carry out their different functions individually at different locations the cytoplasm is a major metabolic component and there we have the structure of the eukaryotic cell we have the cytoplasm we have the lysosomes and you can see that all these organelles they are in they are membrane bound even the golgi apparatus and the secretory vesicles now we shall be looking at each cell or organelle individually so what is the cytoplasm this is the fluid part of the cell in which other organelles are contained and it is aqueous so or you could say it is a general like structure and the cytoplasm is like the body where you find all the components of what makes up the cell so, the cytoplasm contains the following. It has water, which makes about 70% of it, and it has enzymes for several metabolic activities, including protein synthesis. The cytoplasm also has organic molecules like carbohydrates, proteins, and lipids, and materials like urea as waste products. We shall be looking at how these proteins are made in the next class, that is protein synthesis, and in cell division so we, there here are the other organelles we have the nucleus which is double it has a double membrane and it has an outer membrane it, so what is the function of the nucleus it has pores which allow control and exchange of substances for protein synthesis which we shall look further in another class we have endoplasmic reticulum like we said we have the rough one and we have the smooth one the small sacs are called vesicles can break off small sacs called vesicles can break off rough er to join golgi bodies and smooth er make lipids and steroids we have ribosomes which have large and small units and they are also used for protein synthesis that is why it is very important and it is found in both prokaryotic and eukaryotic cells next we have the golgi body which collects and processes it collects processes and sorts molecules from the rough er ready for transport to other parts of the cell or out of the cell that is secretion vesicles also use vesicle also used for lysosomes and we have lysosomes the lysosomes break down unwanted structures that is old organelles and digest bacteria in the white blood cells the hydroly the hydrolytic enzymes work in and out of the cell and we have the mitochondria it has it is used for an, for aerobic respiration which we would which we spoke about in another class and it's also used for lipid synthesis it produces atp which is energy that we the cells need for other activities and the inner membrane controls exchange of ions or molecules into the matrix now we have the surface membrane, which is partially permeable and controls exchange between cells and the environment. That is why, it, the reason why it is partially permeable is because it controls what comes in and out of the cell, of the, of, comes in and out of the cell in order to prevent any harm or damages to it. Then we have the microvilli, which increases surface area of membrane for, 
for absorption. Microvilli are finger like extensions of the surface membrane. If they look somehow like cilia, but they are not cilia. Then we have microtubules, which make up the cytoskeleton. This cytoskeleton is what um, is required during cell replication, that is, during meiosis and mitos, my, mit, mitosis, which is used to form the spindle fibers. Now we have the centrosomes, and the centrosomes make up spindle for cell division. Now we have the chloroplast. In the chloroplast, photosynthesis takes place and it contains chlorophyll for the green color. In plants, they have cell plants have cell walls which prevents the cell from busting and gives the cell a defined shape. That means the plant cell is very rigid. And we have the plasmodet matter, which allows movements between cells and they link cells together. They have the vacuole, which controls exchange between vacuole and we have the tonoplast controls exchange between vacuole and cytoplasm it contains fluid and, and regulates osmotic properties of cells now we shall be looking at plant and animal cells here we on here on my left we have the plant cell and here on my right i have the animal cell like we said it has cell wall that means it is a rigid cell and that is the gray substance that is shaded there we have the mitochondrion in both of the plant cells because it is needed for aerobic respiration and this aerobic respiration gives us atp which is required for the structure that is required for the function of the whole body that is even during mitosis we need atp which is a form of energy and there is the vacuole too we have the chloroplast which is not in the animal cells because animal cells do not make their own food and they do not undergo photosynthesis so what are the differences between plant and animal cells like we have already seen in the diagram we saw that the plant cells have chloroplast for photosynthesis but animal cells do not have chloroplast and therefore cannot photosynthesize and that's why they depend on plant cells for their food Plant cells have large permanent vacuoles and animal cells lack vacuoles and form only small temporary ones. Plant cells do not have centrioles and animal cells have centrioles. Plant cells have a cell wall and consequently have usually have a regular shape like we saw it was that gray shaded part. Animal cells lack cell walls and are mostly irregularly shaped. Plant cells are usually large compared to animal cells and animal cells are smaller than plant cells. So here are practice questions of what we have learned today. I hope we listened attentively and we can recall a few things that we've learned. So let's look into these practice questions. Describe how the following scientists contributed to the knowledge of cell structure and function. Robert Hooke, Jensen, Theodore Squam and Matthias Sheldon. State which, organelles, state which organelles plant and animal cells have in common. Describe in what ways plant cells differ from animal cells, which you just looked at. State which organelles are present in both animal and plant cells. Answer true or false. Prokaryotic cells have mitochondrion and endoplasmic reticulum. State the main difference between prokaryotic and eukaryotic cells. Describe how electron microscopes are better than light microscopes and describe the role of the following organelle, organisms, organelles in the cell. We have the mitochondrion, we have the chloroplast, we have the ribosome, and the Golgi body and the vacuum. And that will be all for today's class. Thanks for listening and I hope you enjoyed today's class. See you next time.